All right, so there's only a little bit more than a week left until the U.S. might default on its debt if the ceiling isn't raised. Up on the chopping block for the budget the Republicans want are Medicare and Medicaid. In the meantime, the economy isn't getting any better. Unemployment isn't getting any lower. Life is only getting more expensive. But the oh-so-misguided, supposedly most trusted name in news called CNN, they've decided to give you a story about something else. One group calculated how much it would cost to go to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. More than $43,000, and that's for only one year. Tuition is actually the biggest chunk, but remember, Harry, he, he needs a unique list of uh, school supplies. He needs a wand, uh, protective gloves, a pointed hat, all sorts of things, a cloak. And what the group wound up doing is looking up... Yes, that is an actual report about an actual study that was done to determine how much it would cost to send your child to Hogwarts, a fictional academy in the fictional movie Harry Potter. But wait a minute. Maybe they'll use this opportunity to talk about the ridiculous costs of real universities, right? Now, to compare, $42,000 is what it costs to go to Columbia University right here in New York. And uh, it's more than a year at Harvard's. Just to send your kid off to become a wizard, it's going to price you right out of the ballpark. I say it costs zero because it doesn't exist. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, you see, even Don Lemon, the anchor, realized how freaking ridiculous and stupid this story was because it's not real. There's nothing going on in the world. No wars, famines, droughts, debt disasters. Maybe you'd have to start talking about made-up fantasy land schools. But no, actually, that would never happen because we don't live in a fantasy world. There is more content to report on than anybody out there can handle. But your most trusted name in news, as they like to call themselves, went with that. You know, if you're going to talk about money being spent, let me give you a good example to feast your eyes on. Do you know how our almost 50,000 troops that are still in Iraq are supposed to leave soon? Or at least they're supposed to, unless of course the Iraqis ask them to stay. But the point here is that it was agreed upon long ago that they would withdraw. But that doesn't mean that our massive embassy that we built in Baghdad is going to be abandoned. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, there's going to be another type of army in Iraq. Whether our troops leave or not, there's going to be a private mercenary army run by the State Department. And we've heard for a long time now that it's probably going to be over 5,000 strong. But that's basically all we heard, and now we know why. This one comes from Wired's Danger Room today. Spencer Ackerman got to interview a man named Stuart Bowen. He's a special inspector general for Iraq Reconstruction. He's the man who needs to audit the program, who's supposed to be a government watchdog, see what the hell the money is going to be spent on. But Bowen told Ackerman that the State Department has been shutting him out, keeping him in the dark, not answering the most basic of questions like, how much is this going to cost overall, and how many hired guns are you going to have per State Department official? What we do know is that so far the State Department has awarded three security contracts that are worth nearly $2.9 billion over five years. But we don't even know if that's going to be all because the State Department won't show anyone the details. I mean, this is absolutely ludicrous. Not only does the idea of the State Department having its own army scare a lot of people, I mean, let's admit they're not really the most experienced bunch in that regard, it also raises a lot of questions about how long we intend to stay in Iraq, what we're going to do there. I'm just dying to know how many diplomats an army of over 5,000 is going to be protecting while they drive from one spot to the next. It also makes you sick to your stomach to watch social programs be putting on the chopping block, to watch gridlock in Congress, all while the Pentagon and apparently the State Department do, they get to build private armies with no oversight. That's something that's worth looking into. But that's something that the mainstream media chooses to miss. It's just so much easier to calculate the costs of a fake school in a completely fake world.